Hello everyone, I'm Sarah, Rich Textures Crochet. Welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Phoenix washcloth. This is a fairly simple washcloth to work. The texture is on both sides and it is quite pretty. Uh, the washcloth measures approximately 8.5 inches by 8.5 inches. I'll give you some instruction later on in the video on how to change its size. Today for the tutorial you're going to need a 5 millimeter or an H8 crochet hook as well as some cotton yarn, a worsted weight cotton yarn. I will be working with the Pima Cotton by Lion brand. You'll find direct links to these items in the description of this video. Also down in the description you'll find a direct link to the free written instructions which are on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe, say hello down in the comments, and uh, take a look around. This channel is updated every single week with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Now our Phoenix dishcloth today is worked in rows. You're going to start by making a slip knot, and then you're going to work a foundation chain. Now your foundation chain today will need to be an even number of stitches or if you'd like to go for that eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch size you're going to start by chaining 30. and 30. Once you have your 30 chains worked you're going to begin row one by working a single crochet into the third chain from your hook. You're then going to single crochet in each remaining chain all the way across. You'll notice that I am working into the back bumps of my foundation chain. This is really uh, just personal preference. You can work into any loop of the foundation chain that you desire. So single crochet for row one into that third chain from your hook and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row you're going to have a total of 28 stitches. At the end of your row one you're going to chain two and turn your work. Now for row two you're going to begin working some of the texture in the washcloth. What we're going to do for row two is beginning in the next sit stitch we're going to work a reverse single crochet two together. To work your reverse single crochet two together you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Then reaching back you're going to insert your hook into the previous stitch which is the same stitch at the base of that turning chain. Insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. You're going to continue working reverse single crochet stitches all the way across to your final chain two space. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the previous stitch which is the same stitch uh, where you worked your previous stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. You're going to do this all the way across. When you come all the way across to your final chain two space, you're going to finish off the row with a single crochet into that space. Chain two and turn your work. 
Now for rows 3 through to 20, you're going to repeat that row 2. So working your reverse single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across until you come to that chain 2, into that chain 2 space, you're going to finish off the row by working a single crochet, then chain 2, and turn your work. You're going to repeat this row all the way through to row 20 or to the desired size if you're changing the size of your washcloth and then meet me back here. At the end of row 20 this is what your work looks like from the beginning. You're going to work one more row, so chain one, turn your work, and we're going to simply work a single crochet into each stitch all the way across. Beginning with that first stitch, your chain one does not count as a stitch. At the end of row 21, you're going to re leave that remaining chain 2 space unworked, chain 1, and turn your work. We're now going to begin the edging of our washcloth. It is worked in rounds. So you're going to start round 1 by single crocheting in each stitch all the way across the top. So beginning in that first stitch, you're simply going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. You're then going to work, once you've worked a single crochet all the way across, you're going to work one more single crochet into the corner, and then evenly work 21 single crochet stitches all the way along the rough edge. I'm going to begin by working in the same stitch as my corner stitch. There's one, and then work 21 single crochet stitches all the way across. You can adjust this number. You'll just want to make sure that you take note of it so that you can work the same number of stitches across the other side. So right now I've worked seven stitches. There's 19, 20, and then 21. Work one single crochet into your corner, and then single crochet in each stitch all the way along the bottom. Once you come to your next corner stitch, you're going to work a single crochet in the corner, and then once again, 21 in stitches along the side, finishing off with one in your corner stitch before you join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. So go ahead and work one stitch in each stitch, one single crochet in each stitch all the way across, then one in your corner, 
Work along that opposite side, work 21 single crochet stitches up your side and one in the final stitch and meet me back here. I'm here in my final corner working a single crochet into the final corner stitch then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. We're now going to work one more round for our edging. For round two, you're going to chain one and work a single crochet into your first stitch, which is your same stitch as joining. You're then going to work a pico stitch. To work your pico, you're going to chain three and then slip stitch back into the third chain from your hook. Now alternatively, you can also slip stitch back into the top of the stitch below the chain three. Sometimes I find this helps to keep it a little bit tighter. It's really up to you. You're then going to work a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. and then pico, chain three, and slip stitch back into the base of that chain three. Repeat that all the way around your washcloth. Single crochet in each of the next two stitches, followed by a pico stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches, and pico. You're going to repeat this all the way around even in your corner stitches. You're continuing to work just like so all the way until you come back to that first stitch. When you come all the way around at the end of round two, I'm finishing off with a pico stitch. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and then fasten off your work. You can then take a yarn needle and tuck in your end. I'll see if I have a yarn needle here with me. So just take your yarn needle and weave it in just to finish off your washcloth. I'm just going to loosely tuck this end in. You can be a little bit more thorough on yours if you'd like. And then trim off any other tails that might be still sticking out. And that is your Phoenix washcloth. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe if you happen to make the Phoenix washcloth and share it on social media. Do be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet. I always love to come by and admire your work. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.